Auschwitz, the largest and most harrowing concentration camp operated by Nazi Germany during the Third Reich, stands as a haunting reminder of humanity's darkest chapter. Within the confines of its barbed wire fences, over 1.1 million lives were tragically extinguished through the relentless use of gas chambers and the unspeakable violence inflicted by sadistic guards. The notorious Commandant Rudolf Haas faced his own grim fate on a specially built gallows within the camp, serving as a testament to the reign of terror he orchestrated within the sprawling complex. The guards, meticulously schooled in the art of instilling fear, unleashed a living hell upon the prisoners. Yet, Auschwitz was far from being merely a place of mass extermination. It was also a nightmarish theater of torture with one foreboding section looming larger than the rest block 11. Auschwitz's origins trace back to its humble beginnings as an army barracks, but as the Second World War raged on, it metamorphosed into the largest concentration camp within the Third Reich, ultimately becoming its most lethal embodiment. A staggering number of approximately 1.3 million prisoners passed through its gates, where the sinister gas chambers operated relentlessly claiming innumerable lives day after day. At every corner of this horrific compound, death, starvation, and suffering lurked. With prisoners toiling under backbreaking labor and receiving scanty rations that plunged them into a state of widespread malnutrition. Many guards demanded prisoners to work until their last breath, while others never even made it past the camp's entrance. Upon arrival, Prisoners faced an ominous selection process, where cold-hearted guards and doctors handpicked those who were deemed fit for labor while consigning the elderly, sick, and young to an immediate and cruel death within the gas chambers. To maintain a semblance of order within this dark abyss, the guards were ordered to wield violence, and many took perverse delight in their newfound roles as murderers. Some prisoners met their ghastly end through relentless beatings and vicious whippings, with these public spectacles designed to terrorize others into submission. Notorious figures like Irma Grease and Johanna Bormann utilized their vicious dogs to terrorize and maim prisoners, leaving a trail of bloodshed and death in their wake. Inmates who failed to meet productivity targets were ruthlessly shot on the spot while others received fatal beatings for minor infractions of the camp's draconian rules. It was within the confines of Block 11, a brick building nestled in Auschwitz by the primary camp, that the embodiment of cruelty found its most potent expression. This place bore witness to execution and torture, becoming a den of unimaginable suffering. Standing adjacent to Block 10, the infamous Auschwitz death wall cast its dark shadow over this grim corner of the camp. Witnessing countless prisoners meeting their doom at the hands of firing squads. The horror did not end there. Inside Block 11, an array of torture chambers and punishment cells became harrowing instruments of pain and suffering, all in the quest for information extraction. Within the notorious Block 11, Prisoners were subjected to unspeakable torment under interrogation. A particularly heinous device was the bogus swing, a creation of the vile god Wilhelm Boger. This ghastly contraption featured a meter-long iron bar suspended from the ceiling by chains, onto which naked prisoners were shackled, bent over, and swung across the chamber while they were subjected to relentless questioning and brutal beatings. Guarded by remorseless sadists, these prisoners suffered horrifying blows, leaving them little more than a bleeding pulp. The ordeal continued until many perished, reduced to mere sacks of bones and flayed flesh. Boger, known for his monstrous acts, eluded the hangman's noose, escaping execution for his role in the torture at Auschwitz. It was also within Block 11 that the first attempts to implement the heinous Cyclone B gas for extermination were carried out in September 1941. Witnessed personally by Commandant Rudolf Haas, these trials involved the first killing of Russian prisoners of war in the basement of Block 11. As the final solution gathered momentum, Auschwitz's guards explored different methods of executing prisoners with Cyclone B eventually becoming the primary means within the gas chambers. 
Block 11 served as a macabre prototype gas chamber, enabling experimentation and the killing of more Russian POWs under the watchful gaze of Haas and his guards. Inside Block 11 resided those prisoners suspected of defiance and resistance, who faced a range of brutal treatment from beatings to gruesome torture sessions in specialized cells. Among these, the standing cells stood out as particularly horrifying. These cells, measuring a mere square yard, crammed four prisoners inside, where they were forced to stand for days without any respite. The air was sparse, with only a two-inch opening providing minimal ventilation, leading to severe suffocation and suffering. Prisoners in these cells were given minimal food, and the stark conditions led some to resort to desperate measures, like eating their own shoes, just to stave off starvation. One survivor of the standing cells recounted his nightmarish experience during the Auschwitz trial, where he endured six weeks of torment with only three small meals. Another prisoner was so desperate for sustenance that he resorted to consuming his own footwear. Haas, in his attempt to justify the standing cell's existence, falsely claimed that they were utilized for only three nights of punishment. Block 11's grim roster of inhabitants primarily consisted of prisoners who had undergone interrogation and subsequently received death sentences through hanging or shooting. In the early years of the camp's operation, those assigned to the harshest labor were imprisoned here, including numerous Polish priests. Initially housing the Sonder Commando, the groups of prisoners forced to burn bodies. Block 11 eventually became a place for detaining police prisoners individuals suspected of involvement in resistance activities. Countless prisoners met their end inside Block 11 through various means including death by starvation for those sentenced to a slow and agonizing demise, left in cells to wither away. While the entire Auschwitz complex was a harrowing embodiment of cruelty, Block 11 emerged as its most feared section. The sinister devices and relentless punishment administered here transformed it into a place no soul wished to inhabit. This, in turn, earned it the grim moniker the Death Block of Auschwitz. Yet, it remains vital to acknowledge that Block 11 was merely one facet of the larger horrors that unfolded within the concentration camp system. Daily, prisoners faced unspeakable suffering and cruelty, making Auschwitz a harrowing symbol of humanity's capacity for unparalleled evil. In remembering these atrocities, we are reminded to remain vigilant against the forces that once led to such unfathomable suffering. By ensuring the memories of Auschwitz endure, we pay homage to those who perished and seek to build a world where such horrors never repeat.